We're continuing in the lucid word. The author says, section 13, purification from najas and the manner of removing it. So here they chose not to translate the word najas, uh, nor to put an Arabic word there inside. Among the conditions of the validity, uh, among the conditions of the valid prayer is to be clear of najas filth on one's body. Uh, quick question for you here. When it says, to be clear of nudges filth on one's body, what kind of nudges filth are we talking about here? What type of nudges filth are we talking about here at this spot? Five, four, unexcused, correct. Barak Allahu Feek. So to be clear of nudges filth on one's body, meaning unexcused nudges filth on one's body, even inside one's mouth and nose, meaning from the orifice. If it's inside of an orifice, the, this, the blood in his mouth and his nose. But we're not talking about, as he's going to say, the wound, the blood from the wound. To be clear of Netch's filth on one's body, clothing, place of prayer, i.e. what the body comes in contact with while praying, meaning place of prayer means where your feet are standing or where your knees land or where your palms land, or where your face lands when you prostrate. And what one is carrying, like a bottle containing nudges, or a tissue contaminated with nudges kept in one's pocket. Yes. Meaning, here, how do you determine whatever moves with your body is like your body? If nudges filth comes in contact with one's person, i.e., their body or clothing, Yani, his body or clothing, or what he is carrying, like a shawl. Yani, this one was easy. Translate that. Shawl, Yani. A rida is an unseamed garment similar to a shawl usually placed on the shoulders and head, or just the shoulders. Yani, it's a shawl, Yani. Uh, unless, I don't know if why it wouldn't be. If it's not a shawl, I don't know why it wouldn't be. So, their body or clothing or what they are carrying like a rida that one puts over his shoulders. His prayer is invalidated, whether the najas is dry or moist. So that's the type of najas or category, case of najas, dry versus moist. So najasa is categorized in different ways. We just saw one now which is here, we said, excuse, unexcused. So sometimes the jasa is excused or unexcused. That's one classification or one perspective. And also sometimes the najasa is dry or wet. That's another classification. Unless one casts it off immediately by shaking off the dry najas that had fallen on one's clothing. Shaking it off, not picking it up and dropping it. That's going to invalidate your prayer right there. As soon as you pick it up, that's going to invalidate your prayer. And doing anything that's like picking it up is going to invalidate your prayer. And what's like picking it up is taking a stick, for example, and then pushing it off with the stick. That's like picking it up. So how are you going to remove it? Like what the author says here, by shaking it off. Or the likes of that, like by plucking it off without touching it, though, like it's on one part of your clothing. So you pluck the other part of the clothing to knock that off. Yani shaking it off or knocking it off is how you're going to get the dry nudges filth off of you while you're praying without invalidating your prayer. Yani not only here is right here, this word Rida, I say. Doing like this makes it more difficult because being a rida is not important to the case. Could be anything. Could be the headgear you have. Could be something you have on you. So it's the, not the rida that's important. So that it's very important not to translate this as shawl, for example, and very important to put the Arabic word there and then put English in parentheses like that and then put footnote. Yeah, I mean, this is not this is not important to the mas'ala, the word rida. So 
one's prayer is invalidated whether the nudges is dry or moist unless he casts it off immediately by shaking off the nudges, the dry nudges. Because you're not going to be able to shake it off if it's wet. Because wet means sticky. When I say sticky, I mean it adheres. It transfers. If you had uh, water on your palm, if your hand was wet, and then you just put your hand on the wall, isn't it going to leave wet print on the wall? Yeah, because that's what wetness does. Sticks. Transfers. So uh, when I say sticky, I don't mean like glue. I just mean transfers. So one puts... Uh, sorry, where am I here? Bismillah. So the prayer, one's prayer is invalidated whether the nejis is dry or moist by this nejis coming in contact with you. So nejis means filth. I usually just say filth. So some people, they don't like the word filth because they find that's too confusing with dirt or something that's not nejis. So that's why also some of our sheikhs, they say nejis filth, like a hyphenated word or compound word to be very clear. Unless it is cast off immediately, shaken off, knocked off immediately by shaking off the dry nudges that had fallen on one's clothing or by immediately removing the shawl contaminated with either the dry or moist nudges filth. Meaning, removing the clothing, the piece of clothing that got nudges on it. So your nudges that's going to fall on you is either dry or moist. If it's dry, then it's possible to knock it off without removing the whole piece of clothing. But if it's not dry, that means going to stick, according to the meaning that I just told you. So if it, since it sticks, then it's not enough to try to knock it off because it's sticky now. So then you're going to have to knock off the entire piece of clothing if you can, or shake it off without carrying it. So if you knock off the entire piece of clothing, then it doesn't matter whether it's wet or dry because you remove the whole garment. But if you're not going to remove the whole garment, then it's going to have to be dry so that you can knock it off without leaving any net just still sticking to you. So I think that's clear. Then one's prayer is not invalidated when he knocked that najasa off immediately. This is also the case if the Nejis filth is exempted, excused, unaffected, like being stained with the blood of one's wound, like being stained with the blood of one's own wound. In which case, one's prayer is not invalidated either. The blood of your wound is excused. Not the blood from an orifice, not the blood that comes out of your mouth or your nose or an orifice. Orifice means hole. But rather the blood of a wound, like a cut or a gash, or you were praying, you got shot by an arrow, and there's an arrow sticking out of your arm. Now you're bleeding. This will not invalidate your prayer. It is an obligation to remove the non-exempted nudges filth. He says, so if I have a nosebleed, it's not excused. Correct. It is an obligation to remove the non-exempted nudges filth for the validity of prayer. Because it's not excused. It's effective. This is done by removing its entity, i.e. the entity of the nudges, the physical body of it, that is, the bulk of the nudges and its properties, color, taste, and odor, by using purifying water. So how are you going to remove najasa? The way to remove najasa, whether it's on the floor or anywhere else, is to first of all pick up the body of this filth. Toss it. Yani, get rid of the body of it, the bulk of it. Now what's left are its traces, color, taste, and smell. Now you need to remove those traces too. So if it's on the floor, if it's in clothing or on the body or on your couch, yani, on the furniture, same thing, all is the same rule. Now, someone might ask, what about though when it soaks down into the mattress? How do I clean that? 
Now, that means you're going to have to maybe pour water in such a way that it gets in there if you want to clean the inside of your mattress, which is not necessary for the validity of your prayer, but you might want to clean the inside of your mattress. So then you're going to have to do the same thing. It's the same rule. That's the one rule. What you need to do is translate that rule into an action. This is what a lot of people can't do. So that makes things not clear for them. They hear a rule. They don't know how to do it. Like, let me give you an example. You know the story of the Israelites when they had to slaughter a cow. What did Musa say to them? Slaughter a cow. So what did they say? Oh, how is the cow supposed to be? Instead of just slaughtering a cow, they could have went and slaughtered a cow. They, they, they said, how is the cow? So then Musa told them, like this. They said, ah, give us more. They told them like this. They said, ah, that's not enough. So don't be like that. So now I'm telling you, remove the bulk of the najasa. So you say, how do I do that? Yanni, what you going to do? Get some rubber gloves if you want to. Get, uh, what? I don't know. Put a plastic bag around your hand or get um, a dustpan. Yanni, remove the najasa. Now, let me give you another example. The scholars, they say that uh, whenever an obligation cannot be fulfilled, unless you do another thing too, then that other thing is an obligation. So for example, had it been obligatory on you to stand on the roof, and that means, so you go, how's that? How am I going to get on the roof? So then you do what's going to get you on the roof. So what you're going to do, you're going to get a ladder, or maybe you're going to rent a helicopter and hop out of the helicopter and get down on the roof. But you're going to do what makes you achieve that. So. Remove the najasa, remove the bulk of the najasa, remove the body of it. Now that's gone. How are you going to do that? Somehow. And then remove the properties of it, color, taste, and smell by using purifying water. Najas is not legitimately purged by other liquids because water is the agent of purification. Nice. It's nice wording there. The agents of purification. That's good. I was saying tool. Agents, better word. As they say in Arabic, the Allah. But agents works here nicely. So najis is not legitimately purged by other liquids. What does that mean? It means if a spot had najasa on it, a table or some spot, a floor or whatever, and then you came with some liquid, maybe it's bleach, maybe it's pine salt, Maybe it's vinegar. Who knows? But it's not water. And then you poured that spot over the najasa, and now the najasa appears to be gone. Then that's not sufficient because that's not water. So najas is not legitimately purged by other liquids because water is the agent of purification. Nor by something else other than water. That's not a liquid, such as fire. Fire does not remove najasa. And sun does not remove najasa. And wind does not remove najasa. The foregoing judgment is specific to najasa ainiya, najis filth that has discernible characteristics. That means detectable najis. The foregoing judgment is specific to, yeah, I mean, that means the aforementioned, the judgment, the case we just mentioned now is for detectable najasa. Detectable means has discernible characteristics, which are, what are those characteristics we just said? Color, taste, and odor. So what we are talking about now, all of what we have talked about pertains to detectable filth. Uh, so when it comes to taste, how's that? Like you ate some food and you could taste the najasa in there. You got a slice of cheese pizza and for some reason tastes like pepperoni. 
tastes like pepperoni and sausage. Why did my cheese pizza taste like pepperoni and sausage? Ah, it's because of the pizza slicer there. He uses on everything, cross-contamination. Uh, are you sure there's no jazz on that pizza slice? Well, you can taste it, though. So that proved it for you. You detected it. You didn't imagine it. So this judgment is specific to detectable nudges. So this is a new category or a third category of najasa. We said some najasa is wet or dry. And we said some najasa is excused or unexcused. Now there's another way to look at najasa, detectable or undetectable. Question, in the previous matter regarding the najas filth that comes into contact with a person's rida, if you were to use your hands to remove the rida instead of shaking it off, what does use your hands mean? Does that mean pick it up? If use your hand means pick it up, then that's not valid. But if use your hand means shake it off, then that's valid. And to pull it off of yourself. That's that's like lifting the najasa. So what's the rida? This is a scarf. So that's just your question right there. That's why that should have been translated. Because it doesn't matter that it's a rida, so that needs to deserves a defocusing there. Uh, and I'm not blaming your question there. Just feel like that wasn't handled right in the book. Rida, that's a shawl. You said lifting is the same as carrying. For sure, they mean exactly the same thing. I don't know the difference between lifting and carrying. If you lifted your baby, you carried your baby. Same thing, right? Maybe, maybe lifting means initially picking it up from the ground where while or from the surface while carrying means having it already after carrying it from the surface so it's the same thing though here yeah pulling it yeah this, that's going to be just like knocking it off of a stick if you had an ajasa on you and you had a stick and then you used the stick to push it off of you that's that's going to invalidate your prayer that's just like lifting it. It has the same judgment as lifting it or carrying it, picking it up. Amin Wafiq. Hmm. Nah, so that's the case for detectable nudges. Detectable nudges. As for the Najasa Hukmiya, no, there's no translation here. Uh -huh. Why not? Then down there, there's no translation here. But it does say, it is the nudges that such and such. So it's dog nudges. Yani. Okay, I'm not going to say something. As for an najasatul hukmiya, as for uh, undetectable najasa, it is removed by merely pouring purifying water on it. Meaning, you have a spot of najasa, you know it's there, but there's no trace of it. Meaning, you can't detect it. You know it's there, but there's nothing to uh, that makes it detectable. So that means there's no color, taste, or smell. How do you know it's there? Because you saw it there before. But then when you came back, for example, there's no trace of it. But you never cleaned it. Then you know it's contaminated. So you need to wash it properly. By pouring water on it one time, pouring water on it one time, the Najasa Hukmiya is the Najas filth which does not have discernible color, taste, or odor any longer. Here, this word any longer, I'm not sure that's in the Arabic. Such as urine that has dried and no color, taste, or no odor, taste, or color is detected. Yes. So, if you have najasa, uh, undetectable najasa, undetectable filth, how do you clean it? Just pour water on the spot one time. That's it. Let me mention for you also, before I forget, 
the case of the washing machine. Someone told me that some teachers gave them an unsatisfactory answer. So, all right. You already know if you put Najasa into a small amount of water, that's going to contaminate all of the water. So your standard washing machine is going to have, you know, be enough for a small amount of water. So if you put Najasa in there, then it's going to contaminate the water. That's true. That's what someone told her. So they told her, therefore, all your clothing is Najasa. But it doesn't stop there, though. So that's not really a good answer because the washing machine has uh, cycles. So yeah, let's say you had some Najasa on some clothing, you put it in the washing machine. Now, if you clean the Najasa off first, then you have no issue whatsoever. But if you didn't clean the Najasa off first, you just put it in the washing machine, then what's going to happen? When it fills up the first time and there's Najasa in there, then that's going to contaminate everything. Now, all your clothes are contaminated. That's true. But then what happens? And let's assume that by doing that, it actually made the Najasa undetectable. Usually that's going to be unless, it's, unless you're, um, you have too many clothes in the machine so that you can't really get the dirt out of the clothing. Usually, it's going to get the, it's going to pull the Najasa up out of the fibers of the clothing, the washing machine. So, but when it fills up, let's say it fills up and it pulls the Najasa out of the fibers. But now all your clothing is contaminated because it's in a little bit of water that got in or that was in contact with Najasa. All right. But then what happens? After that, the washing machine uh, drains, so all the nudges water is gone. Now you still have your wet clothing in there. It's all contaminated. But then what happens? You get a rinse cycle. That's new water coming in there while the clothes are spinning around without the water collecting. It's going out immediately because this is a rinse cycle. That rinse cycle right there, assuming that all the Najasa came out of the cloth was pulled out of the fibers from the first time. Now everything's Najasa, but the rinse cycle right there is going to clean it out. That's going to be Tahir. And then your washing machine might do for you two rinse cycles or three rinse cycles. And then you pull your clothing out and there's no Najasa there, then judge it as clean. Don't say that all of that is Najasa. You said related to Najasa, a person said that they don't pray outside like in the park because they say people bring their dogs there and chances are that any place they choose to pray will have come in contact with dog filth. So that person probably has whispers. Because this person is not allowing himself to pray anywhere. Because he's saying, well, I'm standing right here. Maybe there was a dog right here. Let me move over. Ah, oh, maybe there was a dog right here too. Ah, oh, this whole thing. I can't pray nowhere out here. So that's whispers of the devil. He says, so I don't need to rinse them in water separately because something with nudges was accidentally put in the machine. Not if the case is like what I described to you. But I did say to you, sometimes if you overload the machine, you put too many clothes in there, it's not going to get the najasa out of the clothing, out of the fibers. But even then, even in the case that, let's say there's still a stain in one of your clothing, that doesn't mean all the clothes are najasa. You know why? Because there's still a rinse cycle at the end. So the rinse cycle is going to remove all the najasa from the clothing. Only thing that's left is a spot of najasa on some clothing somewhere. Just clean that off. You don't have to say, oh, my whole load is najasa because this one spot here is still there. So it says, as for the undetectable najas, he said, what if the clothes still smell like najas? Then it depends, actually. So. 
why still smells like nudges depends. It still smells like nudges because it wasn't washed well, then that means it's still contaminated. If it still smells like nudges after thorough washing and it doesn't have any color though, then it's purified. I mean, after thorough washing though, I'm saying thorough. That means after you put effort, an effort. Now the the origin is not going to be putting clothes in the washing machine, right? Those machines are new in human history. I mean, so originally you're going to be cleaning Najasa with your hands, cleaning the clothing with your hands. So. If after a thorough washing, I'm talking about by the hand, it still has a smell, then, but not a color, then it's excused. Or also, still has a color, but not a smell, then it's excused. That's like how a person might have blood stain, it won't come out. Or even yeah, I mean, what people call skid marks. Sometimes there's some things like that, they won't come out. You wash and wash and wash, won't come out. So there's still a trace of color, but there's no smell. Then this is this is clean. I said excused. It's clean. Yani, it's it's clear. It's clean. It's no. It's, it's purified. It's purified. Hmm. So. Um. Yeah, so that being said, I'm, I'm saying take it back to the effort of cleaning it with your hand. So usually washing machine is many times stronger than you, what your hand can do alone. So. The Najasa Hukmiya is the Najas filth which does not have discernible color, taste, or odor any longer. Okay. And the Najasa Kalbiya, the filth of dog, dog filth or canine filth, is a Najas filth that pertains to a dog, pig, or a hybrid bred by both or one of them. Yani, a dog is a living filth and a pig is a living filth and any hybrid that came from either of those is also a living filth whether that were a mix of a dog and a pig or a dog with something else or an or a pig with something else this our religion taught us those things are possible allah knows what exists out in this dunya those animals that live in the wild they might crossbreed Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Don't you know some scholars they said giraffe is originally from crossbreeding? There's another animal in the I think it's in South America. They say it's related to giraffe. I forgot what you call it. It looks like a mix of different animals. Subhanallah. They said those who said that the giraffe is a some sort of a hybrid. They said it's a mix, it's a result, it has certain formula. When certain animals, three different animals, so it means not all at once, it's a process. An animal with another animal, then they have a baby, and then that baby with another animal, they say like that, then comes giraffe. Allah knows though. Other scholars, they said this is rubbish. Uh, anyway, I'm going farther. So, the, the the dog filth is the filth that pertains to a dog or a pig or a hybrid from either of those. La hyena is not a dog. Uh, and I don't even think that's for us religiously. As Muslims, hyena is not dog. But I don't think the kuffar also classify it as a canine. I don't think they put it in canine. They say foxes and fox and wolf and jackal, those are canine animals that are not dogs though. 
We say they're not dogs, period. Whether you want to call them canine or not, they're not dogs. Wolf, fox, those are not dogs. They're not najasa while they're alive. A dog is a living filth. A wolf is not filthy while it's alive, nor a fox. This type of najasa is removed by washing the nedges filthy area seven times. Yani, dog filth or pig filth is removed by washing the nedges filthy area seven times. And we're talking about after removing the bulk. Because you're not going to wash the bulk of the najasa. You're not going to pour water right on top of, for example, feces of dog. There's no point to do that. Remove that feces altogether. Get rid of it. It's the surface you want to clean. So remove the bulk of the najasa and then wash that surface seven times. One wash mixed with purifying soil. Until the water becomes murky. That's how much you have to mix the water mix the soil with the water until the water becomes murky and the soil reaches every part of the contaminated area by the agency of the water it was mixed in. And understand what this means. What does wash mean here? A wash means a wave or a pour. That's a wash. Just like when you make wudu. So if you made wudu and you put, let's say, you put the water in your palm and then you lifted your arm up so the water runs down your arm. That's a wash. So if you had najasa on a spot, dog najasa, you're going to want to clean it seven times. So you remove the bulk. Let's say it's just a small spot, not very big. So then you brought a cup, regular cup that you could drink from, and you filled it with water. So if you pour water, some of it, on there, that's one. Wash right there. Then do it again. That's two. That's three. Like that. Question, are all parts of the dog considered not just filthy or just the saliva or hair only? All of it in the Shafiri school, the entire dog is filthy, every part of it. I mean, it is by the help of Allah Ta'ala. Amantu billahi wa bi rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And so that's, that's, that's simple. So if it's like a really big spot, then you're going to compensate for the size of the spot. Maybe you need to bring a bucket and pour the bucket seven times. Or maybe if you fill the bucket three times, you can get your seven washes out of there. So it's like that. Or you can fill the bucket two times and get your seven washes out of there. Or one time and get your seven washes out of there. The washing which removes the physical presence of the Nedges filth is deemed one wash, even if there were a need for numerous washes. So this, what he's talking about now, is assuming that your wash includes the actual bulk of the filth. So remove the whole bulk of the filth altogether first then if then you can just do your seven washes but if there's still some bulk left there and then you poured water one time and the bulk is still there then that's not even a complete wash that's not a complete single wash once the physical presence of the nedges is gone all of that is one wash and then you have six more washes This means that the washing could take out that is. This means that the washing needed to remove the entity of the dog filth along with its characteristics of taste, color, uh, and odor. Comma. Whether this is accomplished by one or several washes, comma, is considered one wash. Hence, six more washes are needed. So I say, removing a lot of these like this, just putting the English is going to make it more readable. It is a condition in order to remove 
impurities of any sort for the water to flow over the contaminating, to flow over the area of, for the water to flow over the area containing Nedges filth, not to submerge it in the water. That's what we talked about. If the water used for purification is a small amount, yeah, and if you have a little bit of water, don't put the najasa in the water. Pour the water over the najasa. I.e. less than two kollas. Now even here, put kollatan in Arabic and then doesn't say kollatan in English. So there wasn't a need to put the Arabic there. It says two kollas. The najasa must not be submerged in a small amount of water because if this happens, the water becomes impure on contact. Yes. This is different if the najasa is submerged in a large amount of water, in which case, uh, this is different. So I would say it this way. This is different from the najasa being submerged in a large amount of water. Um, in which case there is no such condition because the water does not become impure through contact with the impurity, Yani, the large amount of water does not become impure through contact with the impurity unless it is altered, unless the water is altered. Yani, a, a large amount of water does not become filthy by contact with filth. It stays pure. Because water is strong enough to isolate najasa. A large amount of water, that is. Wallahu a'lam. We'll stop there. And then, inshallah, Allah enables us next week. We'll start with clarifying additional conditions of prayer. Yeah, here this is centered. Yes. Some other headings weren't was weren't centered. This one's centered. The one up above. This one is centered. I think there's one after this. Let me see. This one. This one's not centered. This needs to be centered. Question, are there English words for hukmiya and kalbiya? Yeah, hukmiya means virtual, means having the judgment of. You know how you say, it's virtually like this. That means it has the judgment of it. Virtual filth has the judgment of filth. But the way I translated it was undetectable. And kalbiya means canine. So canine filth. Can I repeat my edit in the last sentence that I just read? Yes. This is different from the Najasa being submerged in a large amount of water, comma, in which case there is no such condition, comma, because the water does not become impure. Yani, the large amount of water does not become impure through contact with the impurity unless it is altered. You're welcome. Any other question? I always get feel I always feel guilty after I criticize the work done here. And I don't mean to take away from the goodness that was produced, but just to improve it, inshallah ta'ala. And I would like to see very good publication of this here. Uh, the Arabic there, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that there's some whispers that motivate putting the Arabic in the sentences like this. So if that's the case, take those out. 
because anything that motivates the whispers, remove it. Don't, don't uh, entertain the whispers of the devil. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.